Hey everyone, today I want to talk about lipoprotein A and heart disease. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Rothenstein. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist who specializes in heart disease prevention and management through science-based nutrition. I want to really make sure that those of you who do not have a lipoprotein A checked, you only need to check it once in your lifetime, really should be requesting it at your next blood draw. The reason why is because it is a sign that you have a more higher propensity from a genetic standpoint to have acceleration of plaque formation at an earlier age. We're also seeing a lot of studies that show that lipoprotein A's that are elevated, those individuals are at increased risk of aortic stenosis, which is stiffness in the arteries and heart failure. But we can mitigate it. We, this is, doesn't mean that heart disease is inevitable for you, but we need to know that A, you're at increased risk so we can be super proactive in optimizing your vascular health, your heart health, and improving your cardiometabolic risk factors so that these things don't show up in your life. So a lipoprotein A is a test you request, um, and it tells us if you are at an increased risk of heart disease. It is not the only genetic factor, but it is an important one, and so I recommend and everyone get tested. We want that number to be less than 75 nanomoles per, per liter. And we can't reduce this through nutrition, through supplements, through medications, where it actually becomes silenced. So there are a couple of medications that may lower it slightly, but when we look at how it affects the event risk of a cardiovascular event or a, car or a plaque formation in the arm, arteries, those, um, those supplements, those medications have not been shown in trials to actually have an impactful result. So what we know, though, is we can downregulate this gene if we're super proactive. And what does that mean? So if you were to look, let's say, at one cardiometabolic risk factor, which is LDL cholesterol, and you looked at the, the range that everyone should be, usually for the general population, it's 100 milligrams per deciliter or less. In someone who has a high lipoprotein A, because they have a more increased susceptibility of heart disease and plaque formation in their arteries, that value is actually should be less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. We also need to be looking at blood pressure. We need to be looking at your echocardiogram to assess for aortic root dilations, for diastolic dysfunction, for things that are showing that there is stiffness in the arteries, and we need to be addressing that timely. So if you know you have a high lipoprotein A, you can be more, you can have intervene more early. You can be more aggressive in lifestyle modifications and medication as necessary to halt progression and to prevent it going forward. If you have a high lipoprotein A and your LDL has been high for several years, you may want to get a calcium score, which is essentially an assessment, a CT scan that assesses for calcified plaque in the arteries, the last stage of atherosclerosis. And if you have plaque, and a high lipoprotein A, then we may even need to be more aggressive to ensure that this doesn't cause any issues down the line. Um, but from a treatment standpoint, the medications, there's some in trials um, that are trying to silence the gene. The supplements, we haven't really seen a benefit from a perspective of long-term event modification. Um, and we are seeing a little bit of harm in terms of having megadoses of niacin and how that could potentially increase blood clotting. So we really need to be cautious with that that, that, medic, that medication and supplement as well. Um, but what we can do is really look at your nutritional profile, really look at your blood vessel health and assess how we can improve it. So as a cardiovascular dietitian, I really focus on the nutrition aspect of this. And there are so many things that we can do, um, but I'm going to give you one example just to jumpstart your journey. So one thing is, is when you have excess sodium, it causes constriction in the arteries. So oftentimes, individuals will be advised to go on a low sodium diet. But what I want you to do instead is actually focus on nutrient adequacy. What are the nutrients you need to add and what pairing in order to improve your vascular health, improve blood flow, and improve blood viscosity, improve the ability for blood to flow well throughout your body. So instead of just focusing on sodium, you actually want to be focusing on your sodium to potassium ratio and ensuring you're getting a lot more potassium than sodium in your meals so that instead of your arteries being constricted, they're opening up, they're vasodilating.
breathing. And that can really help with improving vascular tone and elasticity in your arteries. But there's so many things we need to address. It's not just one thing. We need to be looking at inflammation. We need to be looking at oxidative stress. We need to be looking at all these risk factors from blood sugar to blood pressure to cholesterol levels to abdominal adiposity, waist circumference, to ensure that we're looking at everything because all of it matters. It's not just one thing. We're seeing a lot of more and more research showing the connection between insulin resistance and increasing the LP little a. So we need to be more understanding of we need to optimize heart health from all aspects in order to improve blood flow and to reduce your risk of aortic stenosis, heart failure, and progression of atherosclerosis. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Um, feel free to read more on my blog about lipoprotein A, where I discuss this in a little bit more detail. If you're interested in getting more heart disease prevention tips from a nutrition perspective, feel free to join my email list on my website, www.entirelynourished.com. If you're looking for more support on your heart health journey and understanding how to mitigate all of these underlying root causes of heart disease, I highly recommend joining my six-week heart optimization group program where we go through all of this. I explain it everything to you. I explain the why behind my recommendations, and I give you implementable tips so that you can be really successful. I'm also accessible to you in this time to ask questions in the group program and really be there to support you and make you sure that you're empowered and knowledgeable about what you're doing in order to optimize your heart health and live a long and healthy life. If I can be of any help, feel free to reach out to me. Wishing you a great day and we'll talk again soon. Mm -hmm.